Hey folks, so we've got a pretty, <laughs> pretty terrible project to have to do right now. Uh, you know, earlier this year, or actually later last year, in the fall, I had built these, uh, these porches. I built one, this one here in the front, and then the one in the back. Well, unfortunately, the cabin's still sinking. And so what's happening is uh, the because the cabin is, is settling and the porch is not, up here in this corner, I run the risk of the uh, top of the porch actually hitting the soffit and then causing some damage. Uh, and so to prevent that, what we're gonna do is I'm going to cut the porch here along this line and along this line, and we're gonna take the entire top right off. And now, as far as the back porch, we're gonna do exactly the same. We're gonna cut them, cut it right along that line there, and along that line right there, all the way out, and then just take the top off. Uh, we didn't really wanna do it, but unfortunately, we run out of time, and, the, and, and you know, with, with the, the cabin settling, uh, it's just, we, we have to do it. I cannot run the risk of damaging the soffit fence, so. Yeah, so we're going to cut them off and say goodbye to our porch, at least for this year. Uh, we're going to figure something out uh, and uh, going forward, so we'll see. All right, let's do this. So sometimes good ideas aren't so good and building these porches the way that we did not the best idea so now that they are off we have amazing sunlight here but unfortunately we're also vulnerable to the weather now so for right now this is gonna work and then come springtime uh, we will have to figure something else out so but uh, cabin safe that's what matters So you saw in the last video or two, when we were putting up our paneling in our den, I had electrical wires just kind of laying all over the place. Well, we're kind of at a, at a time now where uh, I'm gonna start, I'm working on fixing all that. Uh, originally, we just wanted power in here, so I just, you know, I laid lines down and I threw some boxes in and, uh, but uh, now that, uh, now that we've got our walls up, uh, I'm going to do this, you know, at least install it the right way for us. Uh, basically, you can show them that one over there. So basically, what we're doing is a junction box underneath each of the uh, sockets. Uh, and so what I'll be able to do is if we want to add more more lines later on I'll be able to just go right into the box and then uh, you know, create more lines so what I'm doing right now is I started at the far end now I'm working away my way along the bedroom wall here and then uh, when I get to this box over here I'm gonna this take that one apart and then put a little junction box at the bottom and then uh, yeah so that's what we're working on. I should have done this in the beginning, I think, but you know, again, we were in a rush for other stuff and we had winter coming, so we had to get other things done. But we're here now and we're getting our electrical fixed. So, yeah.
supervisor. Huh? How am I doing? Okay, so uh, originally when we put this in here, I just threw this together just to give us power. What you on that? Yeah. Whitco is our supervisor. Tasanko is the Tasanka is the uh, what do they call him? The foreman. He was just in here. He took a look, made sure everything was okay. So we got wire to the light in here, coming down to a switch right here, and then we have our outlet, and now we are coming over to here, and we're going to put a double outlet here. Uh, simply because we might have, we're, we're going to put our washer and dryer here. A uh, washing machine will run off of 110. Um, the dryer, we have a propane dryer, but that also has, runs off of 110. And then we have our hot water heater here. So uh, at some point, there's a chance we'll have three, you know, we'll need a uh, three plug. So we're going to put a four plug here. And then, uh, yeah. Right now, we're just putting together the the box. Hi, Sue. You helping, Daddy? I understand the electrical side of things. I did the solar, I get it. I understand how it works. My degree is in electronics engineering. I don't know all the code for like building elect electrical, but I certainly understand how the fund or the fundamentals of what electricity is and all that stuff. Yeah, don't ask me to do things to code because I have no idea. I don't know anything about that stuff. Alright, so I'm done for the night, but I wanted to test to make sure that everything we've done so far is working and all the connections are good. So 
basically what I've done is simply the test that I piggy tail off of my line plugged it into a known good outlet so basically what we're going to do is we're going to plug our phone into each outlet and make sure that we're charging we're good we're good we're good Good. We're good. Uh, now, oh, one more. Hold on. Got one more. We're good. And now, the big one is lights in the bathroom, which we have not had yet. So. We have lights in the bathroom and it works. So this is, this is huge for us. Uh, we, for the last, well, since we moved in, in in August, we've been using these little $5 lights <laughs> uh, from uh, Harbor Freight. I think they're like five or six bucks. This is the first time we've actually had lights in our bathroom. Oh my gosh, it feels great. <laughs> it's been so long since we've had actual lighting and it, it, it's great. It, it really lights up the bathroom really nice. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm happy, very happy. Here's a little cost cut, cost saving tip. If you have a box of clickers that you don't want and you're missing these little screws, just steal them. Steal from Peter to pay Paul. I have outlets that we picked up during our uh, preparations when we were still living in Illinois, but some of them don't have the screws. so. stealing them and we don't like these these types and I have quite a few of them so we're just gonna take what we need throw the rest in the box for another day so right now we've got the house 90% wired uh, I've got power in the kitchen, along the kitchen cabinets, in the bathroom, the hallway. And then I'm working on over here by the TV. So that's what we're gonna get done now. And then once I get all that wired in, we'll shut the power off to the cabin. I'll wire up the uh, circuit breaker and we'll be good. We'll have power. Now, during the summertime, We've got some bigger projects that need to take place in here. And so once we get those done, then I can go back, especially in the, the kitchen area, then I can you know, do the, the wires nice and tight and get everything attached. But for now, this will work. And that gives us a lot more access points for electricity. So pretty pretty stoked about that. We don't have to use extension cords anymore which was always bothersome because extension cords are, are great when you need them in a pinch, but not really good for long-term use. So yeah, that's where we're at. Remember, steal from Peter, pay Paul. So this is the last junction box we're putting in on this project and so this is going to be connected to this switch and we're going to run ran an outlet up on the top we're going to put some led lights up there uh so one of the things i did want to address because i know some people have asked us 
Um, why do we, why are we running our electrical on the face as opposed to running it in the walls when we had all the walls open and we could have easily put them through the stud and put them inside the wall? Well, the answer to that is pretty easy. Number one, we, we're not using conventional walls. Had we used drywall, maybe we would have done it. Uh, the reason being is if we wanted to add electrical or if we needed to remove electrical or if we had an issue with it, you know, you just cut open the drywall, do whatever you've got to do, and then repatch the drywall. But because we are using unconventional siding, uh, it would have been very difficult for us to cut a hole in this and then patch it up so that it looked, you know, decent. Uh, that's the first reason. The second reason is uh, we wanted we wanted to be able to have the flexibility to move electric electricity if we wanted to, and this is so much easier. Uh, aesthetically, yeah, you you know you you're seeing the junction boxes, you're seeing all the wires right all of the outlets are um off of the wall but we don't care we, we we don't care about any of that uh we're looking for functionality here and for us this just made perfect sense for us we knew when we going into this uh before we even moved into these cabins we knew we were going to put the electricity on the outside because it's simple it's easy uh, easy access, easy manipulation, um, and so, so yeah, that's why. I would recommend, if you're going to be doing this, building a cabin, living off grid, where you don't have, you can't really, you know, bring in, you know, there, there's nobody to service it but you, I would recommend doing something like this. Uh, again, because of ease of use and since, you know, we're not electricians by any stretch of the imagination, we need to be able to have the flexibility to, to make repairs, make changes, things like that. So that's just my two cents. <laughs>